That's terrible. Norma, Norma, Norma. Time for our lesson. Yeah. Seems we need to have a little talk. Yeah, well, I'm getting that from you. What is it about? When you approached me last month after my set at Big Tom Tiger Thighs, what did I say to you? You said, I'm sorry, sir, I don't sign autographs. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> yes, but also, I also said something else. I told you I would teach you the art of the jazz. Mm -hmm. On two conditions. One. That I not talk to you in public. And two. That I pay promptly. And on time. That's what promptly means. So you do remember. And yet I find myself this Wednesday in the unbearably awkward position of taking one of your Save the Whales themed checks to the local banking establishment, only to have an obese and very heartful and very articulate teller named Latrina tell me that this check your check had bounced. Oh, no, no, that can't be. Oh, it be. No, that account it has so much money. That's my utter queen money account. Oh, really? Money yeah, account. well, we're going to have to suspend these little lessons of ours until you can get your ducks in a roll. Wait, Edna, please, I don't want to cancel the lessons. Please. Uh -huh. Wait, well, it's like, no. I'm not used to being made a fool of in the banking establishment. My father came over on the Mayflower, and my grandfather invented the thing in lipstick that makes it roll up. So don't talk to me, okay, about banks. I was practically raised in a bank. And um, you have to accept my apology, please. Rosa will show you the door. Rosa? Rosa! You La Porta! Didn't even let me tell oh. the story, Edna. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is Rebecca Lowenstein. Rosa, would you show Miss St. Cloud to the door? She's standing next to it. She is terrible. I can hear you. You're fired. Maybe. We'll talk about it. I'm not a criminal. I'm a girl. She's my voice teacher, not my parole officer. And she was looking at me like I stole something. And I didn't steal anything. I stole something once, fabric softener. But she doesn't know that. And I'm sorry, Devin. I'm boring you. Devon. Devon? Devon, rhymes with one ton. No, it doesn't. Dude, if you're upset, you can just say so. About what? There's a stain on my tie. You're upset and it's ruining the date. No, <laughs> I'm not upset. I'm actually having fun. I like the date. I've been on other dates that I hated with freaks. Bad freaks. I could show you some VHS tapes that would make you be like, wait, oh, wait, sorry. Not sexual things, creepy, but I meant that I make VHS tapes where I talk about the dates and I send them to my therapist back home in Little Fork. I do that about once a week. I'm doing one tonight. Why don't you just get a therapist in New York? Because Dr. Ludens knows me. I've been seeing him since first grade. He's so smart. He lives in a dairy barn surrounded by cows. I don't understand. What does a first grader need therapy for? 
I had post-traumatic stress from being born. I had all these birth canal nightmares. I still have them. They're so scary. I have to go. Because I said the thing about the birth canal. That was so gross no. and awkward. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. it's not that. A canal is not something you should ever say. No. It should never be brought Would up. Would you mind going back to my apartment before the movie so I could change my tie? Really? It's a really nice tie and there's a stain on it. I get it, it's bothering you. We'll, we'll take it off, put it in my bag or whatever. Or we could go back. Or you could take off the tie. I have to change this tie. Fine, we'll change it. While we're here, do you want to have a drink? Oh, okay. Um, sure, I'll have a sweet tea vodka with cranberry and two sugar cubes. Cool. If you have that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's your drink of choice, Devon? Well, you know, I'm actually on the wagon, so Virgin Manhattan for me. Cheers. <laughs> Um, so, what are you going to do about the whole voice teacher pickle? Let's not talk about that pickle. I feel awkward. I'm talking about myself so much. Tell me more about you. Okay. Um, I was raised in a strict neo-pagan household. But honestly, so... about that pickle, I've overdrafted my bank account. Did I mention that? I have no money and no job and no real reason to be in New York. I mean, when life presents you with a problem, you have two choices. You can either adapt or retreat. So, what are you going to do, Norma St. Cloud? I don't know. Adaptation has never really been my strongest suit. Well, I could help you. What? Really? <laughs> I never thought when I woke up this morning, a real live hedge fund manager would be helping me with my personal finances. <laughs> I work less as a manager and more as a secretary. Then I promise not to sexually harass you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. So just those three things. That doesn't seem hard. Uh, what about food? I can just eat street pretzels if I have to. You know, there are other low-cost options. Other I'll than... just eat street pretzels. Okay, street pretzels. Okay. Uh, alphabetically, jazz. Mm -hmm. How much are you paying for lessons? This just says a lot. And you're sure she's the best? I'm positive. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's a horrible, Horrible human waste dump, but she's got all the connections, and if I want to make it in jazz. Okay. Um, shelter. Shelter, yes, good. How much do I have to spend on shelter? Given your current financial situation, I'd say nothing. Okay, so money. How to make some. A job. Let's take a gander at your resume. I don't have my resume with me. Or not with me. I don't have a resume. Well, have you had a job before? Hey. Don't be rude. Of course, I've held many jobs. But I came from a town of 600. You don't need to have a resume. Everyone knows each other's beeswax. Well, Norm, I really think you need a resume. Okay. All right, well, let's make you one. Fine. Where have you worked? Okay. I was a egg finder at Luden's Hatchery. That was boring and I didn't like doing it, but my therapist thought I should stay. He also owned the hatchery. I. Um, I had a Boy Scout vest and a Boy Scout hat, and I stood outside the Boy Scout den holding a sign that said, Boy Scouts welcome, which I thought was obvious. I was the assistant turkey grinder. I wrote a poem that was published. Is that a job? I was the lead turkey grinder. I worked at a, a store that sold nail polish to women who had eating disorders. I was the assistant turkey grinder again. I got demoted for eating the turkey. This is important, write this down. I was the utter queen. That's right. I won the pageant with my rendition of Mac the Knife. I got to ride Big Fork at the Little Fork Dairy Parade and Cattle Drive. <laughs> Rita Lukash had to ride on the spork. Boom! Norm, I hate to say this, but... I have to move back home, don't I? God damn. I need to move back home. Unless you do something drastic? Yeah. It's getting late. I'm gonna head out. Oh, we missed the movie. That's okay. 3D glasses give me headaches usually anyway. Well, it was nice to meet you, Norma St. Cloud. Yeah. Hey, if I'm ever in New York, I will call you.
It tastes like pickles. Dr. Ludens, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just, do you remember the utter queen pageant? Oh, of course you do. You were the judge. I remember when I was up on the tractor singing Mac the Knife. Everything just melted away. The audience, the manure heap, everything. That was the happiest moment of my entire life. And this is the saddest. You know, maybe I am meant to live in Little Fork. And maybe Devon is just supposed to be this really nice memory. And maybe I'm not meant to be a jazz singer. <laughs> I had a choice, you know, I did. Adapt or retreat, right? And retreat it is. You know, I do miss home. I do, I do. I miss the grass and the, um, the stoplight, trees, the library section of the hardware store. <laughs> so, yup, see you soon. You got peach fuzz under that sandy beard. A kitten strokes, pants revealed. 14 pounds of butter lard. Catfish fingers, take me home. Put your face away. Your mouth is like a vacuum. How do you do it? Excuse me? You're out here living on the street. I have an apartment on house. Singing for pennies. You're a failure. I wouldn't say that I'm a failure. And yet you keep singing. You know, I'm a failure too, but the difference between us is that I'm going home. I'm going home, I'm getting on the bus right now, and I'm going back to Minnesota. Okay. I'm sorry for talking about my home. I know you don't have one. I'm not homeless. I was a singer too. There is no was a singer. You either is or you isn't. What is stopping you? Bankruptcy, homelessness, unavoidable life little things. Shit, girl. That all? Do you think the great ones let little petty crap like that stop them? Beethoven was deaf. Jewel was living in a car, shitting in a bag, okay? You do what you gotta do. I don't care how despicable, how damn and dirty, how nasty, you will do what it takes. You will claw your way to the top like a little rat under a pile of bigger rats. Being an artist ain't easy. If it was easy, everybody would be the next Picasso or Lisa Frank. You do it for the love, man. Feel me? You're late. I know, and I'm sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Rosa dumped a bottle of Pepto-Bismol on the carpet after I fired her. Mm -hmm. You can start there. Then you should probably hit the deck chairs. Estoy mucho pigeon crap to scrub. <sighs> Adapt. Can you buy some more tangerines? I'll do it later!